Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video for everything that you need to know for the halogens and displacement reactions. Part 1 then. What are the groups in the periodic table? So the first thing you need to know is the groups are the columns going down, as you can see here. There are three in particular that you need to know for your exam. Group 1, group 7 and group 0. Group 1, they are the alkali metals. Group 7, the halogens. And group 0, the noble gases. The second section of this video is going to have a look at the halogens. Again, they're in group 7, so they have 7 electrons in the outer shell. Again, they have the same chemical reactions, so they react the same way. The physical properties you need to remember for chlorine, bromine and iodine is that chlorine is a green gas, bromine is a brown liquid, and iodine is a black solid. Now, hopefully you can see from that, the trend changes as you go down the group. So we've gone from a gas to a solid, therefore the melting points get higher as you go down the group. So astatine is still going to be a solid and fluorine is going to be a gas. Now there are a couple of things you need to be able to do with group 7. The first one of those is talk about the reactions between a metal and a halide. A halide is anything from group 7. So if I take a metal and chlorine, I'm going to get a metal chloride. The ending changes from INE to IDE. So for example, if I were to take sodium and react it with chlorine, I'd end up with sodium chloride. If I were to do the balanced equation for that, I have Na plus Cl2. Remember, everything in group 7 is diatomic, forms NaCl. Then put a 2 in front of my NaCl and Na, and it's balanced. This is the same for any metal. So if I have lithium and chlorine, it would make lithium chloride. Sodium and bromine, it would make sodium bromide. The trend continues regardless of what metal and what halide you have. But it's also the same if you have hydrogen instead of a metal. So hydrogen reacts with your halide, so hydrogen plus chlorine, and it makes hydrogen chloride, HCl. Again, balance it by putting a 2 in front of my HCl. And it doesn't matter the halide that you have, so hydrogen plus bromine, Br2, would make hydrogen bromide, and so on. The third section of this video is going to have a look at the displacement reactions of the halogens. Hopefully you can remember displacement reactions from paper one, where the more reactive halogen is going to swap places with the less reactive halogen to be part of the compound. So I've got a table in the bottom right hand corner, where I've got chlorine water, which is colourless, bromine water, which is orange, and iodine water, which is brown. And I'm going to react them with potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide, which are all colourless. Now the simple clue, if you see a colour change, it's reacted, therefore it's going to be more reactive. So I'm going to start off with chlorine reacting with potassium bromide. It goes from a colourless solution to an orange solution. That means bromine has been kicked out and chlorine is now part of the compound. So my word equation would look like chlorine plus potassium bromide goes to bromine plus potassium chloride. And if I do the symbol equation, chlorine is diatomic, so Cl2 plus potassium bromide is KBr, goes to bromine, Br2, and potassium chloride, KCl. This proves that chlorine is more reactive than bromine because I've seen a colour change, therefore it has reacted with it. So I can put chlorine is more reactive than bromine. If I do the same with chlorine reacting with potassium iodide, the same thing happens, I see a colour change. It goes from colourless this time to brown. So I know that chlorine is more reactive than bromine and iodine, and my word equation would be chlorine plus potassium iodide goes to iodine plus potassium chloride. So what happens if I add bromine water into potassium chloride and potassium iodide? If I take bromine water, which is orange, and add it into my colourless potassium chloride, the potassium chloride will stay colourless. This proves that bromine is less reactive than chlorine, which backs up what we said. But if I take bromine and add it into potassium iodide, it goes from colourless to brown. So again, I see a colour change, so my word equation is going to be bromine plus potassium iodide goes to iodine plus potassium bromide. Therefore, bromine is more reactive than iodine. And I can check that by adding iodine into both potassium chloride and potassium bromide. There is no colour change. If there's no colour change, it means it is less reactive than both of them. So, it becomes less reactive as you go down group 7.
The fourth section of this video is the test for chlorine. Nice and simply, if you take chlorine, you put it into damp blue litmus paper, that blue litmus paper will turn red and then will bleach. Okay, final part of the video. How can we explain why group one increases in reactivity as you go down the group, but group seven decreases? And we're gonna start off looking at the outer shells. If you remember, group one has one electron in the outer shell and group seven has seven electrons in the outer shell, which means that group one metals want to lose electrons and group seven want to gain them. That's massively important. Now, as we go down the groups, the atomic radius increases, so the size of the atom. That means there are more shells with more electrons. So you get something called electron shielding. So as you go down the group, there is more electron shielding. Now you should remember the nucleus is positive and there's a force of attraction between our positive nucleus and our negative electron. But as the outer electron gets further away, that force of attraction becomes weaker. So that explanation is exactly the same for group one and group seven. The difference is group one wants to lose one and group seven wants to gain one. So for group one, it's easier to lose that electron because the force of attraction is weaker. Therefore, it's more reactive as you go down the group. But with group seven, it's harder to gain that electron because the force of attraction is weaker. So the explanation is the same, except for this one wants to gain it, which means it's less reactive. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.